co-hosted by CNS and Indian Institute of Management Indore. Friends, it is a happy coincidence that today is World Environment Day and our keynote speaker for today's talk is Dr. S.P. Uday Kumar, an anti-nuclear activist from Tamil Nadu, India. He is the convener of People's Movement Against Nuclear Energy, which has been at the forefront of anti-nuclear struggle in Kudankulam. And I'm sure we'll hear more about it from him. He has also co-founded the South Asian Community Center for Education and Research. On this World Environment Day, we are pleased to have with us Dr. S.P. Uday Kumarin to speak on the theme of nuclear free world is an imperative for sustainable development. I, Darpan Chaudhary, welcome you, sir, on behalf of students of IIM Indore and look forward to hearing from you. Uh, Dr. Uday Kumar, we are really keen to listen to your insights on why a nuclear free world is crucial for sustainable development and also for protecting our environment. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on this uh, program on this important day. As you said, today is the World Environment Day, and I'm so glad. Well, I often think and argue that uh, our world is just like an airplane with some uh, six or seven billion uh, passengers. Mm -hmm. And uh, this world, this beautiful planet, which can be compared to a, a big, big size airplane, has been hijacked by the P5 plus countries like India, Pakistan, Israel, North Korea, and uh, Iran, and others who have the nuclear capability. This beautiful airplane has been hijacked by the P5. And we're all heading, we don't know where, but uh, since the plane has been hijacked and the hijackers are in charge, this plane is divided into a couple of compartments, like uh, an ordinary airplane. The business class, the first class, business class, and the economy class. The first class, countries like in the North countries that we used to call the Western countries or uh, the developed, so-called developed countries. They have all the resources and all the fine opportunities of the world and um, the rich people of the world. They are sitting in the first class and uh, they are having a rather good life with all the uh, you know things that they require. In the business class, the second group of uh, uh, countries and people who get enough to eat and enough to drink and the basic necessities of life. In the economy class, we have the people of the South, overcrowded, don't have much room, leg room or any living room, and the resources are very limited. Since it's an airplane, we cannot have all we want. There is only limited amount of food and water and other things that um, we have to share. We cannot deny any particular person any of these things. And we have to make sure that everybody gets fed and every good, everybody gets enough water safe, drinking water and other things. Now, the plane has been hijacked. We are all in the same danger. If something happens to the plane, not even the people in the first class are going to escape. So they should realize that they are not safer. They may have all the opportunities and all the uh, facilities and the luxuries of life. But if something happens to the plane, if the P-5 explode the plane, they will also die with the rest of the people, passengers. So that they don't understand. And they somehow think that they are very safe. And people in the business class also tend to feel the same thing. They are a lot more powerful than people in the economy class. So they should also understand that they are no longer safe if something happens to the plane. And among the economy class passengers, not many people are aware of the dangers of a nuclear weapons and nuclear warfare. Many of them are 
completely blissfully ignorant about what is happening to their plane. And if something, if the P-5 hijackers explode the plane, it's the whole thing will be gone and they will lose their lives. And uh, you know, all the basic things that we have are going to disappear. So many people, or we can say most people are completely blissfully ignorant about the situation. And those of us, people who believe in uh, the sustainable development, the need to safeguard our environment, and others are shifting and shuffling in our seats, and we are not able to do much because the plane has been hijacked. And they have all the power, all the state power, all the weapons and all the monopoly on violence. So if we stand up and stick our neck out, we will be completely eradicated. So many of us are scared and many of us feel so powerless. Anti-nuclear activists or environmental activists take the risk and point out, keep pointing out the dangers. If we don't get rid of this uh, huge threat of nuclear explosion, if we don't make sure that the P5 powers are accountable to the rest of humanity, our plane can be exploded anytime. We are going to lose everything, not just our lives, but the entire planet, the entire plane that we are traveling in. Such is the nature of the threat. A nuclear warfare between two superpowers or two big powers or even between two smaller countries, Pakistan or Israel and uh, Iran is going to spread and we are going to blow the planet over and over again seven times. We have that kind of nuclear warheads. The number of warheads has been reduced lately, of course, after the end of the Cold War. But then the present day weapons are a lot more powerful than the fat man and the other, other thing exploded over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The technology has become much more advanced. And we are talking about uh, 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 not just nuclear power plants, nor nuclear uh, bombs now, we are talking about thermonuclear bombs and all kinds of things. So this is the single threat that the beautiful airplane that we are all traveling in together faces today. Number two, just for the upkeep of these thousands of nuclear weapons, we are still left with thousands of nuclear warheads and weapons. We are developing, constantly developing the delivery systems, the maintenance systems, and uh, surveillance on all kinds of things. This military industrial academy complex in working constantly on the upkeep of this nuclear bomb technology, on the delivery, maintenance, and all of those things. And it's taking a lot of our time, energies, and most importantly, scarce resources. They have been sapping our energies. If thousands and if lakhs and lakhs of uh, our poor migrant laborers are walking from one corner to the other corner of the country, it's not that we don't have the resources to feed them, to house them, and to keep them as human beings with dignity and safety, but we are allocating all those resources for unwanted, unnecessary things. They said that, uh, you know, uh, deterrent, uh, tech, uh, deterrent theory, if we have nuclear weapons, we will not be attacked by anyone and we will be safe. No, that has been proved completely false now. Kargil war happened despite the fact that both India and Pakistan have so many nuclear warheads, more than hundreds. So that deterrence theory has been proved false. Despite all the nuclear weapons, they came and attacked us in Kargil and we had to fight a war. So nuclear weapons are not deterring wars anymore. Instead, they are, they, they are make their making this uh, war threat even uh, bigger, higher. And that's the reason we say we need to get rid of the nuclear weapons altogether. Not just the P5 countries and all our countries, India, Pakistan, Israel, North Korea, Iran, and all those countries. Now, if we want to get rid of nuclear weapons, we also need to get rid of nuclear power because 
the plutonium that is required for the nuclear bombs come directly from the nuclear power plants. Nuclear power plants may be making electricity, but then please remember that was not the primary target. That was not the primary reason, foundational reason for setting up nuclear power plants. Nuclear power plants was a, were a friend. The whole Manhattan project was about making bombs. And in order to justify the bombs to the taxpayers and the ordinary citizens of these countries, they came up with this ingenious idea of producing electricity from nuclear power plants. So nuclear power plants and nuclear bombs are both sides of the same coin. That is the reason we are opposing both of them together. We, want, we don't want nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is evil because from the, from the very beginning of the nuclear fuel cycle, it causes damage to the environment. It hurts and harms and kills human beings. Look at uranium mining. What is happening to all these mines and the people who are living in those areas suffering so much from the uranium mines. And uh, in the uranium mills, again, people around that living in that area are completely uh, very much badly affected. Nuclear power plants, waste management, nuclear bombs, decommissioning, and all these processes are very expensive, humongously expensive, very much unsafe, causes so much damage to human health and the health of other beings. It damages the health of the environment and keeps us all poor and malnourished and unsafe. The reason why South Asia is still being poor is because we are spending our scarce resources on the militaries, on the nuclear weapons, on the conventional weapons. Unless or otherwise we get rid of these nuclear weapons, we will not be able to achieve sustainable development at all. So that is why people around the world are making, uh, are getting, coming together to oppose these nuclear weapons. In fact, uh, we were supposed to organize an international conference towards that goal, but that has been postponed now. So we need to press that particular agenda. We, the whole, all the citizens of the whole world should come together and we should tell the hijackers, the P5, and the countries who are helping the hijackers, like India, Pakistan, uh, Iran, North Korea, and other nuclear capable countries, and tell them that, look, you are doing a very dangerous thing. You are helping, you are aiding and abetting the hijackers, which is, which is a crime against humanity. And we need to tell these uh, P5 hijackers that what they are doing is immoral, illegal, and unlawful, unacceptable. So we need to make a really worldwide global campaign for the complete eradication, complete abolition of nuclear weapons and uh, complete stoppage of nuclear power plants, uranium mines and mills, and all those things. And then we will be ready for a sustainable development and making not only human lives and the other forms of lives flourish on our earth. Let us safeguard our airplane. Let us distribute the resources among ourselves equally. Let us not discriminate against each other. Let us not kill people like George Floyd just because of their skin color. Let us not hate each other like some fascists are doing here and everywhere. Let us not get violent. Let us be human beings. Let us love one another. Let's think about reconciliation, justice, and sustainable development. I thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share my thoughts with you all on this important day of world environment. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Dr. Uday Kumar, can you tell us something about the Kodankulam uh, struggle? Oh, yes. The Kodankulam struggle, as you know, was opposed to the nuclear power plant. And it was not on the basis of NIMBY uh, factor, not in my backyard we have taken a very clear principled position that uh, a highly and densely populated country like India cannot afford an accident like Bhopal or an accident like Chernobyl or Fukushima. So we don't want a nuclear power plant. Even a small accident can hurt, harm and kill millions of our people. Of course, the immediate casualty figures may not, may not be that high, 
but uh, we don't know how many generations will be affected look at what happened in visakhapatnam recently uh, the negligence of one small company has resulted in the killing of more than 10 15 people innocent people what mistake did they do look what happened in bhopal and these are all industrial accidents we knew the source of the pollution we could uh, remove people from these uh, uh, dangerous spots uh, rather efficiently but in case of nuclear power plant we may not be go anywhere near look what uh, the japanese are uh, go undergoing in fukushima with all their resources technology and uh, scientific capabilities and all the japanese are struggling so hard so a country like india of course we are no less intelligent than anybody else on this earth but we don't have the scientific and technological capability look at covid 19 look at this uh, pandemic that we are facing now we don't even we are not even able to come up with a vaccination for this this is the state of our science and technology so a country like india cannot afford we are a highly and densely populated country we are so many human beings living in one square kilometer so we cannot afford this it's expensive it saps our resources and just because a few elites want to prove their might and want to prove that they we also can nuclear bombs and uh, nuclear power capability you know the, we are doing this full hardy exercise and that is why we oppose the kodangulam nuclear power project and uh, the response of the state was very bad they came very brutally down on us they blamed us of being american stooges we accepting foreign money we were against the interests of india and all that nonsense they could not prove any one of these accusations we are the sons of this soil we are proud about our indian heritage our culture our people we are we are very proud of being indians not like them they are suffering from some inferiority complex when compared to the rest of the world we are not like that we are gandhians we are proud of our gandhian heritage so we opposed it non violently of course we did the campaign for more than 3 years but you know the state government and the central governments Uh, foisted all kinds of false cases on us a sedition waging war on the state and all those cases they never accepted the sentiments of the people they never respected our non violent struggle they are now planning four more nuclear power plants in kudankulam the first two units are not working properly a lot of corruption and malpractices have taken place people's money is being squandered by a few politicians and nuclear uh, bureaucrats nuclear technocrats but nobody is able to ask them any questions they are having a heyday they have all the power they can you know poo poo us like anything so that's a failed project they are going to spend more of our people's money on this thing and when they build nuclear power plants all across our country on the coast india will be roasted by this nuclear contamination and the thermal pollution in the sea we will lose our seafood our food security our nutrition security everything human security will be affected just because of the ego of a few people no what they are doing is evil what they are doing is wrong and we keep continue to talk about this issue and um, uh, i think an overwhelming majority of our people uh, support us okay uh, thank you what about the daughters of the soil i believe the women came out in large numbers of course uh, and, and so uh, share a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yes no could you share a little bit about that because that yes. that is important yes actually that uh, the whole struggle was led by women mm-hmm. fisher women and women from the agricultural villages mm-hmm. and we were only the servants of the struggle and uh, women took the decisions women when we took a, a major rallies women uh, led the rallies women and it means you know women leaders local women leaders uh, were leading the struggle and uh, they have, of course suffered many of them into prison
we cannot hear you uh, dr uday kumar just uh, i hope you are unmuted or maybe there is some uh, internet uh, problem uh, we are not able to hear you i hope you can hear me yes now now we can hear some sound Oh, no, ma'am, it's me. <coughs> he is unmuted, but probably there is some internet issue. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, ha, ha, hmm. we, we just wait for so, him. Or maybe you right. can put in the chat so that we can't hear him. Can you? Can it will. It this. Oh, yeah. Yes. So may, maybe he'll if if he'll come back to us. Yes. <coughs> We'll just wait patiently. Yeah, for he's him. here. I'm he's sorry. Back. Yes, it's that's raining right. so yes. hard here. So I know. Monsoons have arrived there in Kerala, is it? Monsoons have reached there. Yes, yes, it's raining yes. so yes. hard. So I yes, yes, completely. Yes, yes, that time. Yes, yes. So you were talking about the women who were involved. We lost you at that time. Yes, yes. And yes. without their leadership and participation, we wouldn't have done that struggle. But mm -hmm. I really wish the government took them seriously. Address their concerns a lot more meaningfully, so that would have sent a wrong, very strong message to our young generation that uh, the government is willing to listen to the people, and a non-violent struggle would be respected. But instead, they are doing exactly the wrong thing. So now the younger generation would lose their faith in non-violence, and would lose their faith in dialogue, in democracy. You know, this is what these uh, fellows in Delhi and in Chennai and other state capitals are doing, which is very wrong. and i i only wish they understood this because in the future the young people may not believe in all these non violence um, uh, democracy and all that they will you know they will be, start believing in violence right 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 uh, many thanks dr uday kumar for really f- firing our energy and uh, thinking and we now open for question and answer session and participants i'm sure you've got enough food for thought to pen down your comments and questions uh, please type in your questions in the chat box or raise your virtual hand if you wish to speak so um, we already have some questions there uh, jeevan joseph has a question uh, so jeevan would you like to ask yourself yes jeevan jeevan you can unmute yourself and ask he says poor internet internet okay poor yes yes he saying poor internet yes so i'll read out his question or it is there in the chat box um jeevan says sir all, all of the nuclear capable countries claim that their nuclear arsenal and protocol for use are very strict however in a world with some impulsive rulers uh, who have access to nuclear weapons isn't it a possibility isn't it possible that a calamity is just a fingertip away Oh yeah, of course, of course. Look what uh, Trump is be how Trump is behaving with the George Floyd issue. Yes. The statements yes. he makes, the 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 impulse to use military solution for this uh, uh, for this issue. I mean, if if uh, since it is United States, Trump is being uh, being little controlled. If it was a some other banana republic, this Trump guy would have gone crazy now. So yes, that's a very uh, live threat. and also look at the cost of course there may be strict uh, regulation and all of that but look at the cost they are not revealing the total cost delivery systems maintenance systems and to, to communications and first strike capability second strike capability and all that nonsense you know not a small amount of money billions and billions of dollars and spend every single day for what we are not fighting wars every day Right, right. We may be fighting wars in once in for fifty years, and I mean, even that is not possible. That is not necessary if we are democratic, decent, and intelligent, and non-violent, and believe in dialogue. So, for totally unwanted, unproductive reasons, we are allocating thirty to forty, sometimes fifty percent of our national resources, and our 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 children don't have good education, standard education. They don't have employment. They don't have sufficient wages for their employment. we are ill we are not able to uh, you know give a decent dignified life to our people people are dying on railway platforms railway tracks and and um, uh, highways without water food 
look at the plight of the immigrant the, the migrant laborers you know it's so pathetic i feel so ashamed of being a human being when when my fellow human beings are being treated and uh, condemned like this and what use is all our stupid nuclear weapons it doesn't make me any happy or safe or proud i would rather live in a country where all the human beings are treated with dignity and safety and children i i was really i mean i ha oh boy that's a little baby who was trying to wake up his mother hi you know yes. what a country yes. we live in yes yes right right you are very right uh, we had a question from uh, darpan wanted to ask a question darpan would you like to ask your question or you can type it with there if if your internet is weak uh, darpan because he had some question in his mind we'll just wait if he if he's typing the question or asking it otherwise i will ask on his behalf yeah why don't you please read because yes. i may lose the yes. connection yes 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 so darpan wanted to know uh, is a nuclear energy safer than fossil fuel energy or uh, he wanted uh, some clarification on that yeah. that you know they they try to sell uh, nuclear energy by saying that it will not emit carbon dioxide more carbon monoxide and all that yes polluted air is a problem and we have serious problem with uh, uh, fossil fuel energy absolutely no qualms about it but then poisoned uh, i mean the polluted air is a problem but the poisoning the earth cannot be the answer for that what are we going to do with the waste tremendous amount of waste that comes comes from comes from the nuclear power plants mm -hmm. what technology do we have to safeguard all these for 48000 years polluted air is a problem global warming is a problem i totally agree but the solution should the remedy should not be worse than the melody nuclear power plants will produce this waste enormous amounts of waste which will not lose their radioactivity even half of its radioactivity in 24000 years and how are we going to safeguard what moral legitimacy do we have to dump this dangerous waste on the future generations of our humanity so nuclear energy is certainly not the answer for uh, new i mean uh, for this uh, global warming and the fossil fuel problem and look at uh, the fuel cycle from the moment we mine this uh, uh, requires energy new construction of a nuclear power plant requires energy like thousands and thousands of tons of steel cement all of these things come from polluting sources and the nuclear power plant runs from 40 to 60 years and then we have to decommission the nuclear power plants decommissioning requires energy energy comes from polluting sources then once decommissioned these nuclear power plants have to be maintained for a long time waste management and all these processes require energy that comes mainly from fossil fuels polluting sources so when they say that nuclear power is clean which is wrong when they say nuclear power plants uh, are the real answers for the uh, global warming and climate change climate destruction and all that it's a complete blatant lie so and i believe many countries are uh, closing down nuclear power plants or and not constructing new ones at least there are some countries exactly it, that is very true Yes. many countries are closing down yes, and country yes. like uh, uh, germany for example yes yes technologically yes. far superior mm -hmm. and they don't have the facilities to uh, you know maintain their nuclear waste i have been to their uh, waste management site at the assay mountains in goliban mm -hmm. and i myself have gone into the uh, mine i saw myself with my own eyes the way they were managing this uh, nuclear waste and they were very much puzzled what to do how to protect their future generations from this waste right yes uh, sartaj singh has uh, wants to ask a question sartaj please ask your question you can unmute yourself and ask uh, yes sir so uh, regarding as you said that every uh, like uh, regarding the peace uh, between countries which is obviously the most ideal thing which could happen and as you mentioned 
things aspire for peacekeeping with the borders or any other country in the world and as world citizens we need to comply with that or it should be our aim but especially in this world which is so diverse and which which has different kinds of um, uh, you know government types for example in china you don't have a democratic uh, democratic setup similarly in pakistan unarguably although they say it's a democratic setup but it's just a puppet the the pr- pr- prime minister itself is a puppet in the hands of military similarly in north korea there is a far there is a simple uh, uh, stri- stri- strict dictatorship and so how will Uh, especially like these three four uh, countries are all also in the main uh, standoffs a lot of times uh, like in the case of india it's obviously pakistan and china all the us has 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 had its roles in uh, the problem but how can they being undemocratic at the present time contribute to the peace and uh, good and have the sustainable development in the coming years so i think that's a very good question i am so happy that you asked you know um right there are countries problematic countries and uh, dictators in pakistan china can, can or may go uh, astray and uh, hurt us of course that is true so instead of building the defense uh, with uh, the chinese dictator or the pakistani dictator in mind i would rather make all our people strong in patriotism strong in uh, national security concerns how would i stand up for my country dumping everything that i am doing throwing away everything that i have and i will jump for the country when will i do that when i have lot of things to lose that means if i get good education good employment high standard of life safe drinking water two square meals two three square meals a day and my family is beautiful with all good health care and all the wonderful things then i will be really worried that nothing should happen to my country all the 130 crore people in india are given these basic necessities and all the opportunities of uh, life you know there can be no country no dictator come and uh, hurt us because the whole 130 million people will be standing in unison no nuclear bomb can do anything against us no dictator can do anything against us but is that the case in india today a few families are having a headache and a few members of parliament and top politicians are having all the resources and all the things that they require actually seven generations of their children require and most of the people are poor they don't even have a decent toilet and who do you think will come to res- come to the rescue of our country when a pakistani dictator or a chinese dictator send his army into india nobody will come because they have nothing to lose and all they have is just their precious life and they don't want to lose their life also in the name of your uh, so called uh, patriotism nationalism and all that so they will go under hiding nobody is standing there for the country so we have to build the defense within we have to give a meaning life meaningful life to all of our citizens irrespective of our caste creed religion and all that nonsense and here in our country we are ill treating almost more than half of the people in the name of this stupid caste and stupid religion people are mob lynching them just because they have a cup a kilogram of uh, beef is this a country and will 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 all be will all of us be standing in unison no they are nurturing the differences they are constantly telling us that uh, i am superior you are inferior i am big you are small and all this nonsense so we are not united let us make our people united first let us give a decent dignified life to all of us the national security will flourish like a beautiful flower we will all be standing up together 130 million people stand up together no nuclear bomb no dictator no hitler no mussolini nobody can do anything against us and then we will think about uh, uh, you know uh, producing weapons our weapons will not protect us satar i really think only people can do and when if we want people to defend our country we have to make the people ready that is my humble opinion you are very true and that is when all countries including india have uh, pledged to Uh, take take on the sustainable development goals leaving no one behind 
and right. uh, having development for all and we, they have signed on to that 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 is what they will achieve and despite that uh, the ground reality perhaps is very different from you know, what they have inked on paper so i think that that is also there that political will to actually put it into action of leaving no one behind that is important. right exactly thank you sir we have a question from saad rais who says sir we read about the kudan kulam struggle and very inspiring to see the people power what actually motivated the fisher folk women to have that steely resolute and the resolve you know their livelihood is at uh, stake mm -hmm. and they are going to lose the sea mm -hmm. they are going to lose their livelihood they will not have any catch in the because of the thermal pollution they will not be able to get good uh, fish catch and there won't be much price for their fish from that area around in and around the nuclear power plant the fish that is caught there will not be marketed very easily people won't like that fish so they will go hungry they will lose their livelihood they will lose their uh, everything in life and that is the reason very simple people would become poor deprived and uh, they have no, nothing else they don't know anything else to do so they stood up they took to the streets and has that started happening or has it uh, has that started happening already their yes. livelihood oh yeah in this area no, i i talk to the fishermen quite often and they often say that mm. they used to get uh, specific types of uh, fish before which are not available now the mm. fish catch the amount of fish catch has gone down and i also talk to the fishermen near kalpakkam nuclear power plant and they say this that no local people would buy the local fish oh. in fact uh, uh, people who who work in the nuclear power plant themselves wouldn't buy fish locally because it's all con completely contaminated mm -hmm. okay participants one last chance for you to please type in your questions or ask unmute yourself and ask the question because we have very little time and if we don't want to dr udak kumar to leave uh, to lose his connection uh, before we close so just one last chance to ask a question Uh, let me see if there are any more questions. Okay, and uh, Saad Rai is, uh, is thanking uh, Dr. Uday Kumar and saying that yeah, it was good that the men supported the women uh, in that struggle. And uh, let us hope that next time there will be more success and should we should not be demotivated by it. So uh, before we end, Dr. Uday Kumar, you have said whatever you have said, each and every word is. actually a gem uh, but can we request for one take home message from you uh, and particularly because uh, our audience is comprising young students so mm. it is the take home you mentioned the youth and you said because then also lack of leadership and then the youth may not follow non violent methods so some some take home message for our youth yeah i really i mean uh, you know they think that uh, the kudangulam struggle hasn't succeeded but i Uh, for one believe that the, pro, the the struggle is a huge success because we have conscientized the young people the leaders of future india conscious about the threats and dangers of nuclear power nuclear bomb and all these so called development projects the young people are very intelligent they are concerned about their future the future of their own children their successive generations so the young people should become leaders that is the message i want to send we need lead with the result the the huge famine in this country right now is the leadership famine we need intelligent people people who are conscientious who people who have a broader vision people who have moral principles we need young people to become leaders when i say leaders i'm i don't just mean political leaders leaders in every field we need to excel in whatever field we are working in and we need leaders if we had true good leaders in in the medicine for example in the, in the uh, in the uh, in in the chemical laboratories now we would have had a, a vaccine now so we need leaders with good conscience we need leaders who will feel for the poor and the powerless and we need the next generation of leaders will make intelligent decisions they will not be suffering from some kind of a, a colonized psychological disease feeling small when compared to the northern countries they will not be colonized 
they would not feel uh, suffer from inferiority complex they will stand up and tell yes we are indians we are a very very proud people we are capable we are intelligent we can do wonderful things and we will make us india the india of gandhi india of rabindranath tagore india of tiruvalluvar you know not an india of uh, trump and uh, vladimir putin and xi jinping these people are making a joke out of us right now so we need young leaders we need leaders become leaders assume leadership take charge it's your home which is in disarray now people of my generation has let you down we have let you down so please pick up the ruins and start building again who will be their role models because the leaders in the making also have to look up to some role models who will be their role models we have lost him i think just give uh, a little time if he can come back online right i i think there is some uh, internet uh, problem at uh, dr uday kumar's end so with this we come to the end of today's discussion in this session of sdg talks co-hosted by indian institute of management indore and cns we were listening to dr uday kumar a renowned anti nuclear activist from tamil nadu india let us not forget friends that the air we breathe the water we drink and the food that we eat every day all are gifts from the environment we must not take nature for granted rather we have to respect nature and guard it and protect it with all our might bye for now till we meet again tomorrow same time at 3 pm to listen to dr nuzhat hussain on cervical cancer our sincere thanks once again to dr uday kumar for this very insightful discussion Thank you so much ma'am. Thank you so much.